This is Jack Molman, and today is Independence Day, the 4th of July, 2013. Uh, we've got an exciting individual with us today, and uh, we're speaking from the JW Marriott Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia, which is part of the 2013 American Theater Organ Society Convention. So uh, we try to pick up people in the hallway and see what they have to say. So uh, good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Jack. Uh, you found me. Yeah, that's Kevin King. Hi. From from the uh, I forgot to say from around the San Francisco area, and uh, you can get more specific if you want. But let's just start out. Uh, Kev Kevin, first of yeah. all, has wide experience uh, as a performer. Uh, organ owner, a technician, and everything else. When did you first get started in just music? Just music. I, would, I was thinking about that. Probably, you know, I grew up, we always had a piano in the house, and my two older sisters took piano lessons, and, you know, your basic thing there, but they never did too much with it. But I, I never took piano lessons back then, but I would sit down and pick out music on the um, piano by ear and, and enjoy doing that. So... As far back as I can remember, I would pick out little tunes on the piano, um, and then, um, you know, I always enjoyed that, and my parents thought it was kind of neat what I was able to do, so eventually um, we moved on to the organ. Uh, the, only, the earliest I can remember is a neighbor across the street had a, a little old electronic organ, and for some reason that interested me, and uh, the old story of begging the parents, you know, could we get an organ, could we get an organ, so... Eventually talked them into it, and we started working our way from this model to that model, as a lot of the people have, and on into taking lessons. And you know, when you buy the first organ, you get the ten easy free lessons at the piano organ store. So that's kind of how it all started. So did you start with classical organ, or um, no, strictly theater organ? I can remember way back um, discovering things like George Wright was doing a radio show, playing a con at that time, and finding that on the radio, and of course. Eventually, um, living only maybe about 10 miles from Ye Old Pizza Joint, which was the first place pizza place with an organ, once we found that, everything started kind of going crazy at that point. I, I, I saw that instrument, and I was pretty young then. I thought, this looks like something very fun to, to learn how to play and learn about. Now, you, you go around and do concerts. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think was the most spectacular concert that you... I'm going to ask the reverse okay. also. Uh, the, the best one, uh, both in terms of maybe the audience, the organ, mm -hmm. your performance and all, one that you'd love to do over again? Um, boy, of course there have been several, but the first one that came to mind is when I played um, for the Senate at the Senate Theater for uh, the Detroit Theater Organ Society on, on that big old Mayan Inca Aztec console, whatever it is, and, and that was a very special, uh, um, great group. Um, everything went very well. I was treated so well. So that was a very special one for me. I've played there a couple of times myself. It's an interesting console. Yeah, that was the hard part of all of it. It was great other than that crazy layout of the console. If, if it didn't have a combination action, you'd be doing it. it. <laughs> but that okay. was very enjoyable. Okay, what was the worst one that you, you just hope that you never have to do again? Well... Having done a lot of them for some of the local groups in the Bay Area, there were there were a number of them at some of the pizza parlors. Um, I don't remember a specific one, but I can remember times where I just um, you know thought, could we start this over again? So it was probably maybe at the Bellaroma Pizza Place, one of those I did for NorCal over the years. There were times where it was just not my day. Now you're in the theater business yourself because you have a pipe organ that you have. Yeah. Why don't you tell us the where, the when, and how that all came about? Sure, sure. Well, um, my goodness, it's probably been about 20 years ago. Um, now I took over the organ at the Grand Lake Theater. It had been installed by um, Ernie, Ernie Wilson, and he put the organ together out of parts. And um, when he died, a friend who had helped him put the organ in, in the theater there came to me because he always knew I was, it was sort of a dream of mine to have my own pipe organ. And so we um, got together and purchased it from the estate, uh, from Ernie's estate, and then went through the process of, of fixing things up and adding a few things to it. So that's probably about 20 years ago that I became owner of the organ at the Grand Lake Theater. And still play there um, pretty much every other weekend for the intermissions. 
between and, the movies. And you have somebody else play there too? Yeah, Warren Lubitsch always, also plays there on a regular basis, and um, Gordon Pratt, who's one of our local people, also plays there. So we take turns and uh, fill in for each other and have a good time. Now, what's your, your owning a pipe organ? You have to know something about the internal workings of it. So, do you consider yourself a world class technician? Oh, you never say that, but I certainly enjoy it. Um, the way that started was, you know, I played at the Bell Roma Pizza Parlor for 25 years, which is a pretty long time at one pizza place. And somewhere halfway down that road, um, we lost our technician. He moved out of the area who was taking care of the organ, and there was no one to step in. So, it was one of those where I was stuck playing the thing and as things would go wrong somebody had to fix it so I started learning um, you know whether it was to fix a cipher or anything you know on from there and really got interested in the workings of it and then not long after that I started um, helping at uh, the NorCal Theater Organ Society and with a big project over at Berkeley putting the organ in there so I certainly learned a lot doing that. So in addition to music you have another life besides? Yeah, yeah I've um, you know, as many musicians will tell you, you have to get a real job too sometimes. So um, I actually went into teaching. A very good friend of mine has been a, a school teacher for a long time. And so probably about 14, 15 years ago, um, I was um, helping him in his classroom and decided that would be something I'd be interested in. So I've been um, teaching elementary school. First five years I was teaching third grade and for the last uh, eight years or so I've been teaching fifth grade out in Walnut Creek uh, with, uh, at a great school there. So does, uh, being a teacher, do you get a chance to influence the children, so to speak, in the, into the music world? I try to. We have a wonderful uh, music teacher at my school, um, as well as uh, that does the, um, has the kids play the recorders and rhythm instruments, and then there's a band teacher as well, but I try to give them my influence, and of course in the classroom there's always a, an organ pipe here or there, and that gets them asking questions, so I can tell them about uh, things they've probably never heard of, the, the theater have you, organ. Have you ever taken them on a field trip or anything to the theater? Um, haven't yet. I've always wanted to, though logistically it's a little difficult to work out, but um, I think that would be an interesting thing to do sometime. I've got a school in, sort of in my backyard. It's a couple blocks away, oh. and it goes up through fifth grade, and for the last 18 years around, just before school comes mm -hmm. out, they have a field trip oh. over, to, over to my house. Oh, I'll bet they're uh, <laughs> shocked and surprised yeah. by all that. So, uh, what, what do you think is the th future of the theater organ? Um, it's interesting. Every time we get together at a convention like this, or, or even some of the things back home, um, for as long as I can remember, and I've been involved with ATOS and all of this for, for decades now, it's hard to believe, um, every time you hear the same thing, oh, this is the end of it, everything's dying off, and the problem is you hear that every year and it never seems to happen. So. I, I feel pretty confident there will always be people interested in these instruments and playing them and taking care of them. And um, it seems like over the years there's been sort of an ebb and flow of interest, but uh, you know, it's such an amazing thing. There will always be people interested. So just like we saw the rise of them in pizza parlors and that's kind of gone down and then a lot of them were going back in theaters. So um, it's hard to predict, but um, you know, I know it'll always be something I'll be involved with. Well, good, Kevin. I don't want to take up too much of your time. These conventions no. are, are quite busy. And do uh, you have any other thoughts of that you want to put? We don't know who ever watches this. Yeah, these, we don't know uh, who's going to watch this. But if, if anybody's ever watching uh, this type of thing and um, has any interest in these incredible instruments or the theaters that, that they came from, um, you know, it, it's, it's not just the instrument. It's not just the, the, the buildings. It's also all the people involved. Um, such as yourself and all these wonderful people I've met over the years, it, uh, it's really like a family reunion coming to these events, or even if it's a local event with a local chapter. I always encourage people, um, you know, come check it out. You know, half the time when we get together at Berkeley with our chapter, sometimes we don't even work on the organ that day. We just get together and talk about things and catch up on stuff and uh, compare notes. So it's, it's, it has a lot going for it. And it's been a huge part of my life. I finally. I'm kind of finally living the dream now, so I, uh, about three years ago I built a huge music room on my house and have been installing a Wurlitzer there. So um, it's uh, 18 rank Wurlitzer now, it'll be 20 when it's finished, but it's playing up a storm. And so kind of pinching myself, because that's been a dream for about the last, you know, 40 years or so. Well, good. Well, we thank you, Kevin, for uh, Kevin King for being with us today. and. 
Uh, we're going to sign off and see if we can't find a few other people. So this is Jack Moman, July 4th, Independence Day 2013, from Atlanta, Georgia. And, and thanks again, Kevin. You're welcome, Jack. Thank you.